you before. Thank you so much. And for the icebreaker, we're going to start off by doing announcing your name and co-op. And then you're going to say, well, just one second while we're pulling up the slides. Perfect. Then you're going to say where in the world you are. And then the top one or two events that are happening that you are celebrating this week. And then you're going to popcorn it to anyone else that is in the room. So to start off, I'm Ismail Mandry, and I'm an intern at NCBA Clusa. I work on the membership and experience team. And right now I'm in DC, but remote. I work remotely from Jersey, but I'm excited to be in the office. So that's definitely my top event that I'm celebrating this week. I've been in the in-person office Thursday and Friday. And then I will popcorn it over to Dale. Oh. Hi, I hope I am. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Excellent. Yeah, I'm Dale Rudisell. I have, um, and I'll put my, trying to put my um, video on. There I am. I'm on the board of directors uh, with the Chico Natural Foods Co-op that's in Chico, California. And um, the event I am, ex think I'm, ex Really, right now in this moment, it's just so excited to see so many powerful women uh, involved in this uh, event right now. Um, and I'll popcorn right over to Kathy Faith. Hi, um, I'm Kathy Faith, and I am in um, uh, also on a director of Chico Natural Foods Co-op in Northern California. We're at the base of the in this in the uh, Sierra Nevadas at the very base um, in the valley. That's where the co-op is. And um, I, you know, <clears throat> one or two events experiencing. Um, uh, we're just I think we're just celebrating that it seems like our membership is coming back alive. And um, so that will be wonderful. And. I will, I don't have any view of anybody, so I will popcorn to Tamala. Uh, hello everyone, Tamala Blaylock. I'm here in the big room. Um, Vice President of Popper Relations for NCBA Clusa. I am in our offices today um, with some guests in Washington, DC. Uh, top event I'm experiencing this week is that um, we have, we're working together <laughs> in the office. And actually, we're able to invite uh, some guest producers to produce today's um, co-op circle happy hour. So I am excited about that. And I will popcorn it over to uh, Rob McClinton. Hello, everyone. Rob McClinton with uh, smallworld.coop. I am in Los Angeles, right outside Los Angeles. And uh, the top uh, event experience of success happening um, that we're celebrating this week. So, you know, we've had a great week of just building um, connections and uh, networking and meeting great new cooperators uh, this week. Just you, sometimes you reach out a lot, you don't hear anything, then everyone decides to look, check their link in, LinkedIn in the same week and all of a sudden left, right and center. So it's been a great week for building the network. Uh, and then I will, I don't know if um, Alex has gone already, Alex Stone, no? so I'm going to pop it over to Alex. Thanks, Rob. Uh, I'm Alex Stone, and I'm with Cooperation Works, and I am currently in Oakland, California, at a co-working space, hence the very awkward orange lighting and a strange little phone booth, so apologies for that. And um, this week, I am actually really excited to uh, to spend our restful weekend at home for the first time in a long while and just get to kind of catch up on life and I don't know, maybe go kayaking or read that the, the world is my oyster, but that is the first time in a while and feels, uh, feels pretty nice right now. Um, and I am going to popcorn it over to Diane. She's still here. Oh, did Diane drop off? Oh, no, she's there. Diane, if you're still there, you might still be on mute, and we can't hear you. Yeah, sorry about that. I was trying to move my screen around and accidentally logged off. 
Um, is it my turn then? <laughs> you will take the torch. I've handed it to you. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Alex. Uh, Diane Gassaway from the Northwest Cooperative Development Center. I'm in Olympia, Washington. And uh, my uh, highlight this week is uh, not traveling this weekend. Therefore, I'm able to join this circle meeting, which has been a long time. And uh, I will pass it to my colleague, Annie Hoy. Yay. Thanks. I wish I could see your face, Diane. Oh, you will. Just a minute. OK. <laughs> Hi, I'm Annie Hoy, Northwest Co-op Development Center. I just got home from our Chamber of Commerce Greeters meeting where I, uh, every Friday I attend and uh, try to teach the co-op way to fellow business owners. Uh, it's, it's a very lively group of business owners here in Ashland, Oregon, where I am. And um, Alex, I was wondering if you were in a little wooden box and I was sort of envious about the fact that you had a contained space uh, in which to do your Zooming. Um, so let's see, uh, top event experience. Oh, well, I would say but this, this Friday uh, Chamber of Commerce Greeters meeting every week is a very nourishing uh, uh, experience for me. And Maybe they're tired of me telling them about co-ops, but I don't think so. Um, so I have a lot of fun. And I will pop it over to um, Kathy Faith. And hi, Deb Troca. I haven't seen your face in a long time. Hey, Kathy, it's up to you. Hi, Annie. Well, I already went, so you have to choose someone else. Oh, I yeah. do? OK, <laughs> who hasn't gone? Someone in the membership? room there from NCBA. So Salandi's raising her hand. It looks like she's ready to go next. <laughs> okay, go. <laughs> Thanks so much, Annie. Hi, everyone. I'm Salandi Brown. I'm with uh, OCDC, which is the Overseas Cooperative Development Council. Um, specifically, I work within uh, the research group there, um, OCDC's research arm. And if I remember correctly, let's see, where in the world are you? So I am uh, based in Hawkinsville, Georgia, which is about two hours south of Atlanta. Um, and the top event experience this week, um, I have to say, maybe following on Annie's, um, I also serve as a vice chair uh, for our chamber here in Hawkinsville, Pulaski County. And so that gave me a really good idea with what you just talked about to share uh, the cooperative way with our business owners there. So thanks for that uh, suggestion. But yeah, I think that was um, our board meeting this morning was a really great time to be able to come back together and really start to plan the rest of the summer and in the fall. And so, uh, yeah, it was a really good time. And I'll pass it over. Well, first, hello, Aja. I saw you there. Good to see you again. Um, I'll pass it over hey, to my Lady. colleague, uh, Luann Warner with OCDC. I knew you were going to do that, Zalandi. Hi. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I haven't been on one of these in, in a hot second either. Um, so I work with Zalandi. I'm the Deputy Executive Director at the U.S. Overseas Cooperative Development Council. And um, yeah, I work more on the member side. Uh, I am joining you today from uh, Minnesota. I live in the Chisago Lakes area. And um, top one or two events this week it's it's easy for me um so i've been running a campaign um spotlighting our members of ocdc for the international co-op day and uh so that has been a lot of fun it's a 10-week campaign and we're highlighting a different member each week this week it was about world council check it out they have some great success stories about work they're doing in kenya and um in, in honduras as well and a very powerful video from a credit union board member um, in ukraine and how they pivoted their services to support uh, their members during the during war so that has been the highlight of my week is, is celebrating international day of the cooperative so and i also came late so i don't know who else hasn't gone so raise your hand please and help me out no problem. We have Rob, we have Aja. Ma, Aja, yeah. I see Aja. Hey. Okay, I'll go. Hi, thank you. I'm really excited to be here with all of you amazing humans and cooperators. Um, let's see, I am L.A. Simon, some know me as Aja, 
Um, I'm representing Georgia Cooperative Development Center, a board member and interim co-director, as well as Columinate Consulting Co-op. I'm a consultant member there. And I'm in Atlanta, Georgia. GCDC is based in Carrollton, Georgia. And um, let's see. No exciting events this week, just sort of head down working to get funding for um, some of our um, cooperative clients. I'm still buzzing from CCMA, uh, Consumer Cooperative Management Association conference that happened about, I guess it's about a month now, um, and I'm doing some work there and really excited to uh, synergize with everyone. So I'm still buzzing from that and uh, all the great connections. Um, so that's it for me. And uh, um, raise your hands again so I can see who the, who hasn't gone. We have Ramey, we have Deb, and we have Rob. How about Ramey? Take it well, away. Thank you. <laughs> well beings, everyone. Um, you know, I think the buzz that I'm riding with right now, as I'm here from a ridge in interior Alaska, it's the work and the attention that so many people and organizations and businesses and families are are attending to needing all the work and care that we're paying attention working together to try to help all of them respond to so that there is still such need and opportunity that there are so many having these conversations without yet the wherewithal that we share with each other is is an invitation it's a challenge and and that uh that may be a strange thing to be positive and looking forward to but i think that is a tremendous invitation when uh when things do get hard uh so with our aging advocacy cooperative that we've had for a dozen years this is these are these days uh so yes thank you blessings excellent well we're glad to have oh. you Ramey. who are you who are you popcorning who else? To next we have Rob. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and joy who just joined us you can pop it too thanks was to deb. Deb. deb perfect okay thanks thank you all i had to find the mute button um so i'm deb troca with the indiana cooperative development center and i am coming to you today from my home office in Avon, which is a suburb or bedroom community of indianapolis um Two events, one would be the 4th of July. Uh, that was, had some uh, friends, neighborhood friends over and a very active two-year-old uh, running around terrorizing our cats. Um, and then I'm really excited to be with all of you here today. And I will send it on to Robbie. Hey, good afternoon. Um Fowser Fink with USDA Rural Development in the Co-op Services uh, branch, and, and um, I'm in Central Kentucky, but serve the whole United States. And I say the top one or two events I have is we finished up our first housing cooperative webinar uh, last Friday, and we have a series of four more coming up this uh, summer and fall. I'll put those in the chat. And I was excited to start my CW building blocks yesterday and I was late because we were having a meeting on our history. So sorry. <laughs> Good to see so many familiar faces too and I'll pass it to Joy. Hi everyone. Um, well, I'm, I'm calling in from um, Vancouver Island, uh, British Columbia, Canada, uh, first time. Um, joining in. So I really don't know much about um, this circle and what you do. I'm a, I'm a co-op developer, um, independent uh, co-op developer here. And um, I just kind of, yeah, I wanted to tune in and hear what the conversation was. Um, I'm always interested in, um, yeah, co-op development circles and the, um, what's going on and staying in touch. And um, um you stop me if i'm <laughs> say too much um we have co-op zone here in canada our national co-op developers association um i passed on some information about this that look this is a great idea let's have a, a you know monthly check-in or something 
And then in BC, we also have a small um, community of practice of club developers. Um, so uh, yeah, different different ways that I'm tapped into um, club development here in Canada and um, just doing, doing contract work with different co-ops. So, um, you know, that uh, ebbs and flows. And um, right now the not not a lot going on. It must be a summer slowdown. Um, so I'll stop there. But uh, great to join you, and um, just excited to hear what everybody's up to, and, and yeah, catch more news. Thank you. Awesome. Well, thank you for joining us, Joy. We're glad to have you with us for the first time. All right. So I think we have Rob, and is there anybody else that I'm missing outside of Rob and the folks in our room? Oh, no, no. Uh, well, yep, we're good. Go ahead. Hi, everyone. I'm Janady. I'm part of the membership team here at NCBA Clusa. I'm helping out with today's happy hour um, in the Washington, D.C. offices. And the success I'm celebrating this week is my cousin has actually been married tomorrow. So I'm really excited to celebrate that and happy to be here with you all. So I guess that's everything. Okay, I will, there we go, gotta go next. All right, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Maisha Hedden. I am one of the uh, consultants here with NCBA Clusa supporting the membership team, specifically with Co-op Circle, the conversation that we're having, uh, the happy hour event um, and the platform Co-op Circle that you hear about in just a few moments um, and some of the volunteer councils that we do offer here as well. Uh, glad to be here with you all. The one thing that I'm celebrating this week is having just come back from a big, um, I guess, festival event in New Orleans called Essence Fest. Uh, it was a wonderful, wonderful second year round experience. Uh, it's, a, it's a part festival, part celebrating my mom's birthday, which was amazing. So glad to be here with you all uh, after having such a great time. <laughs> awesome. Do you guys want to go next? You just turn your camera on. Hello, everyone. My name is Aaron. I'm an intern for Connect Century. Uh, I've been here for like the last two days just helping out, um, especially with this call. So, um, something that I'm celebrating is still my birthday. Uh, it was last Friday. I turned 22. So I'll celebrate that for about a week. Yay. <laughs> Okay, I don't know if you can see me on there. Yeah. Hi guys, my name is Blessing. Um, I'm also an intern with Connect Centric. And an event, I would say, I was excited about, well, I didn't celebrate his birthday, but um, I would say that I'm excited to be here. Um, and yeah, it's a really good opportunity. And I'm in Washington, DC, with everyone else in the room. And yeah. Hi everyone, my name is Brianna Deed. I'm currently interning at Connect Centric. I'm really excited to be here, shadowing NCBA, and I'm just excited for a chill weekend. Right, so I think we covered everyone. Yeah. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull my screen back up and we will transition into the next piece. And for those of you who are joining, who joined after hearing some of the opening remarks, um, today's conversation is a, a virtual online uh, discussion similar to what you will hear a little bit more about what Co-op Circle does, um, but it provides an opportunity for cooperative professionals to connect virtually uh, once a month, the first, first or second Friday of the month, but uh, currently the first Friday of the month from 1 to 2 p.m. Eastern time uh, to discuss uh, different topics and challenges that you might be having or things that you want to learn from your cooperative peers. Um, so today's conversation is specifically, you know, looking at uh, cooperative development programs and in various aspects that we'll hear um, from of our co-hosts speaking this afternoon. Uh, but before we jump into that conversation, uh, we do want to encourage you to utilize the chat. If you have a question, if there's something that you feel like you'd like to share, feel free to post it there. We'll be sharing some links as we go throughout the conversation. Um, but one of the first things that we wanted to share with you is a little bit more insight around Co-op Circle, especially if you're not tuned into that platform just yet. 
Sure, so I'll take it away and talk a little bit more in detail about Co-op Circle. Um, it serves as a digital hub for all of our members and stakeholders looking to engage in cooperative efforts. Co-op Circle provides a space where like-minded individuals can connect, share ideas, and work together towards a common goal. Um, getting started is really simple. You just use the invite link sent to you, create a profile, and then start creating your first post and networking. Um, next slide. At the heart of Co-op Circle is its emphasis on inclusivity and democratic decision making. Um, the platform enables community members to participate in discussions, network with their peers, and shape the direction of their future endeavors. Um, and by leveraging the power of this technology, Co-op Circle ensures that everyone's voice is heard and that decisions are made collectively, forming a sense of ownership and shared responsibility. One of the standout features of Co-op Circle, you can put the next slide is actually the user-friendly interface, um, and it's designed to make collaboration seamless and efficient. Um, users can create um, anything from dedicated circles or small groups to specific projects or initiatives um, where they can share files, schedule events, um, and share their progress on celebrations. Um, and the platform also provides a range of communication tools, including chat features, discussion forums, and video conferencing capabilities, enabling real-time collaboration and um, yeah, real-time collaboration, regardless of geographical distances. Um, so just beyond facilitating collaboration, it also serves as a resource hub for community-driven initiatives. And users can access a repository of best practices, success stories, and educational materials. And so by bringing together all these diverse perspectives, uh, we can foster inclusive decision-making and provide a robust collaboration tool for you all to use. Um, to drive positive change and build a more equitable and resilient future. So, yeah, that's all I have for Co-op Circle. Awesome. Is there any questions, any comments that anyone has regarding Co-op Circle? We just wanted to give you a little bit of a teaser of, of what the platform looks like if you haven't been acquainted with that already. All right. Thank you, Slandy. So glad to, to know that you love it and enjoy the platform. I know a few of you are already engaging and commenting and sharing information and resources and events uh, like Janae just shared with you all a moment ago. All right. Since I don't see any questions or any hands raised, we will switch right into the next part of today's conversation. So I'll pass it over to Blessing to get us uh, geared up for the next part. All right, guys, so next is going to be today's topic, which is going to be about the Cooperative Development Program. And today we have two guest speakers, Alex Stone and Deb Chandra. So I'll send over to them. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for having us on. Uh, I'm Alex Stone with Cooperation Works, uh, as was just shared. And I, I don't know if Deb wants to give a very brief introduction before we uh, go to our next slide where I can start. No, I'm good. Go ahead. All right. Sounds good. Thanks, Deb. Um, so I think it might be a couple slides up, but um, for folks who don't know, I uh, Cooperation Works is the national network of cooperative developers. So currently we have about 40 organizational members and 20 individual members working all over the United States uh, providing cooperative development services. Um, so this can, this can really range uh, they provide education, training, technical assistance. Um, and Deb's gonna talk a little bit more about some of the differences between the, the various centers in terms of who they serve, what kind of sectors, but in terms of CW, we're really uh, cross sector. And again, uh, operate on a national platform. And we can actually bring that slide back up. I wanna show folks just the map so they can get a sense of, of where our members are, but I think it's one slide forward. Yeah. So this is uh, a map that you can find on our website. And I'm actually going to share my screen in a moment and take you there uh, just so you can uh, explore a little search function with me uh, so you can have a better sense of how to locate a co-op developer near you who might be able to provide assistance. Uh, so as you can see, we have members all over the US. There are a couple of geographic gaps, uh, which is maybe something we can get you in Q and A if anyone wants to wants to probe that. Uh, and we also have centers in Alaska and Hawaii. I should mention, um, I think we've seen a lot of growth in the cooperative development field in the last decade or so. Um, 
And there are certainly both individual cooperative developers and centers that are not necessarily members of CW at this time. Um, and I, again, Deb will talk a little bit more about this. A lot of our members serve a state or fairly large geographic region. I think specifically we've seen a lot more uh, centers that are are like city focused uh, or have a much more uh, tightly um, tightly defined geographic scope, uh, which has been a really interesting development in the network. And I think you can take the slides down for a moment. Um, yeah, and I will, um, Aja, I'll come back to that question in, in just a few moments, but thank you for putting that out there. And I am gonna share my screen so you can see what this looks like on our website. Um, there we go. Can everyone see this? Yes. Yes. Awesome. So, oops. And of course, with Zoom, you always have to move everything out of the way so you can actually do whatever scrolling you need. Uh, so this I've automatically taken folks to um, the part of the website that has this map, which obviously you can zoom in on. You could go and click on this and learn. Of course, that's not working right now. <laughs> and learn a little bit more about the center, including uh, going to a link with them. Um, I can already see that there's something not quite there. And then if we scroll down here, you can actually um, find a center based on various search criteria. I will preface, uh, preface this by saying um, that when we created this part of the website, it was really, uh, hey, you have a member profile page, fill out your information. And there's been mixed results in terms of folks filling out their information. So there's a little bit more utility to be built in here. Uh, but you can see here, if we want to look like where I am, I'm in California, um, and you'll see a mix. Sorry, it's really hard to move the Zoom box around so that I can see my screen as well as you can. Uh, but we'll see a mix of um, all of our members who work in California. Um, providing potentially pretty different services. So for instance, the California Center for Cooperative Development is cross-sector, but serves all of California. Um, the Democracy at Work Institute is really focused on worker cooperatives and is actually national, but obviously will come up for California as a national organization. They also happen to be uh, headquartered here. And there's a couple of other national organizations that show up here, including Food Co-op Initiative. And then we can see some individuals who um, might also do some work in this state. Uh, if you wanted to narrow it down a little more, for instance, you know that you want board training, then we start to see um, a more limited scope of this here. Uh, am I hearing someone have a question? Okay, that was just some background noise. Uh, so you can feel free to go ahead and play with that. There is a link uh, on that spreadsheet or on the uh, slideshow that's uh, embedded there. And I think uh, someone from NCBA might be dropping that link into the chat as well. Um, and I hope that that's helpful in terms of helping you figure out what's available to you in your area, in the sector that you're looking for. Um, and I saw initially that question, uh, can a uh, development center become a Cooperation Works partner? Um, so Cooperation Works is a, a nonprofit that is a membership organization. Um, so certainly a development center can become a, a member of, of Cooperation Works and connect with all of the other organizational members and individual members. Um, and I should put forward that uh, Cooperation Works uh, really provides the scaffolding nationally for cooperative developers to connect with each other, to share resources, expertise, to collaborate uh, both in peer learning and on bigger uh, projects. We provide uh, cooperative education, which I'll talk about a little later after Deb, uh, and we offer support with advocacy efforts uh, for... And uh, I'm going to hand it over to Deb, I think, to talk a little bit more about the actual centers, some differences uh, between them and uh, the process of interacting with a development center. Thanks, Alex. Um, so Alex mentioned that we have a number of co-op development centers as well as individual co-op developers that I'm gonna focus on our co-op development centers. Um, <clears throat> they come in all shapes and sizes. Um, some really small like my center, I have myself and one other staff person who not engaged in co-op development, but in work in the um, food system, primarily in farmer's markets, all the way up to larger centers. You could have as many as 20 employees. Uh, the Northwest Center is one of those larger centers. 
Um, Alex also mentioned that um, centers can be cover like a city. Um, it could cover a state like my center just covers Indiana. There are other um, co-op development centers who serve um, a geographical area, several states. And then we do have a few co-op development centers who serve a national audience like Food Co-op Initiative who focuses strictly on um, developing food cooperatives. So the, the centers, um, just like your individual co-ops serve its members. So each center operates a little bit differently. Um, I am, uh, my center is pretty much a generalist center. So we accept basically whoever comes through the door wanting to start a, a cooperative or talk about co-ops. Um, other centers have um, areas of focus. Um, maybe it's housing or child care or um, food co-ops. So every center basically um, has a slightly different vision of what they want to offer in their service areas. Basically though, we all provide technical assistance um, and that means working with um, an individual, a group of people who are interested in starting a cooperative. Could be a group of individuals, could be a group of existing small businesses who wanna look at say a purchasing cooperative or shared services co-op. Um, so that technical assistance is very broad um, based on the needs of the people who approach the center. Um, most centers do some type of education and training. And um, I'll tell you a little bit about what Indiana does. We um, are just getting ready to do a couple of childcare webinars and we're featuring um, my colleague in California, Kim Coombs, um, who is um, and an expert in child care co-ops. Um, so she'll be doing uh, that first one. And then the second one will be, we'll focus on a couple of um, child care co-ops, one who's already in existence and one who's in the startup process. We also um, do um, a national conference um, specifically for startup food co-ops. It's called Up and Coming. And if you have, um, folks who are interested or in the process of starting a food co-op, we'd love to have them there. The, um, I can put the website in the chat. Um, it's coming up in September 14th through the 16th in St. Paul. And we're very, very excited to be there. We've never had our conference there and are really excited to have the uh, participation of five local existing food co-ops. Um, so that's really exciting. So the, I say that just to say that the education component, again, for each center is going to vary based on the needs in their individual states. Um, right now, child care and housing are two very hot topics in Indiana, and I suspect in a lot of other states as well. Um, and we just did a housing co-op conference at the end of March um, and partnered again with some of our colleagues in Cooperation Works. And that's part of the beauty of being a member of Cooperation Works is um, finding opportunities to partner with other co-op development centers or individual co-op developers who have an expertise that, that we don't particularly have on staff. Um, so working with other co-op developers um, is a real joy um, and it's all part of what we do as co-op development centers, we cooperate. Um, I think I'm gonna stop there. Alex, and kick it back to you. Um, so yeah, there was a couple more topics that I just wanted to touch on, but I think this might also be a good space to see if there are any questions that have come up so far. Great, <laughs> perfect. Um, so yeah, Deb just mentioned a little bit about the education and training um, that many centers offer. And I think sometimes, um, we can get a little confused about how we talk about that, particularly uh, at the cooperation works level versus at the level of our member centers. So generally speaking, um, the actual individual centers are going to be providing education and training for groups of people who want to create um, a cooperative on the ground, the folks that want that in their community, they're working together to get generally like a single cooperative business up and running. 
Um, so this could be, as Deb mentioned, in the form of conferences is pretty common. Um, many of the centers offer academies that provide a more hands-on, intensive, and sort of longer-term approach to uh, helping a few groups of cooperatives uh, develop their business uh, simultaneously. And then Cooperation Works offers training specifically for cooperative developers. So certainly we do sometimes have folks that come into our trainings uh, and they maybe do actually just want to start one cooperative, but the training is actually geared toward folks that want to um, really cultivate their skills in uh, cooperative development so that they can serially develop uh, co-ops in their communities. Uh, as a center they might work for. We've had folks who come in and want to start new centers in areas where those services don't currently exist. Um, so sometimes I think there can be a little bit of confusion between if you're talking about training a developer versus tra training a single or a group to develop a single co-op. Um, so again, generally at the CW level, our uh, flagship training, the Art and Science of Cooperative Developers, uh, Art and Science of Cooperative Development, um, is going to be geared toward people who want to really incorporate these skills as part of their career, um, where centers will be offering that to individual groups that want to create a cooperative. Um, I also wanted to spend just a little bit of time on funding uh, for centers. Uh, I don't know if folks have questions about this or if it's a big mystery, uh, but generally, uh, at least within the CW network, our members are reliant on government grants uh, foundation and other grants, um, some amount of fee for service, and then also some personal giving seem to be the four biggest ones. And that's based on a survey that we did of our members in uh, 2021. Uh, but certainly government grants uh, were the, the primary source of income. Um, and that is largely right now through the Rural Cooperative Development Grant, which is the only uh, persistent government funds uh, specifically dedicated uh, to support cooperative development. So sometimes there are other pots of funding that come in and can offer support, but they, um, uh, they're they not as long standing as permanent or as um, earmarked for cooperative development as the Rural Cooperative Development Grant. Um, and I'll also put forward that that pot of funding is less than $6 million a year, which is a very tiny drop in the bucket. So there certainly is uh, a lot of growth that could be done in terms of uh, funding to to go toward these centers and ensure that this really important work can get done. And yeah, are there, Deb, is there anything you would want to add to that? There was something right on the tip of my tongue and I've lost it, but I did want to say hi to John Jamerson, um, who's on the phone. He's a, um, in Southern Indiana. So hi, John. Uh, good to see you on the call. Oh, I was gonna, what I was going to tell you guys about is, um, so there are several ways to contact the center, uh, any of the centers um, through Cooperation Works um, website. Uh, NCBA also has that information on their website. The individual centers have websites. Um, most of us take walk-ins, phone calls, referrals. So there's lots of ways to interact with the co-op development centers. Um, so I would encourage you, if you um, hear of someone who's interested in starting a co-op and you're not exactly sure who's serving that area, probably the best place to start is the Cooperation Works website and the map. Um, but if you know a particular state has a co-op development center, then you can reach out directly. Um, we, all of us, have lots and lots of lots of partnerships. We can't do what we do without um, working with each other, working with other organizations, um, whether that's um, at the local level, at the state level or nationally. Um, so uh, that's, uh, you mentioned funding, how to get in touch with us. Any other questions? I did want to, this isn't exactly where, <laughs> part of the conversation, but I was really excited to see Joy on the phone. And Alex, I'm gonna throw this out. NCBA does this monthly call. I'm wondering if there's an opportunity for the for Cooperation Works to partner with the co-ops in Canada to do some across the continent, you know, across the uh, country lines and uh, learn what's happening 
um, with the co-op development space in Canada. Yeah, I think that sounds great. I know I've uh, briefly connected with some folks at Co-op Zone. Um, and Joy, it's really great to, to have you on the call and I'd love to continue having that conversation. Um, thanks. Um, I, I, um, Co-op Zone is going through its own changes right now. And um, I did, I did um, we have a list through nationally and I, I think that our numbers are somewhere around 30 members, you know, individual developers. So we're not a major force, but, you know, we keep the candle burning. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, I did, I did share it with, with the board that I was just going to join in this call because I think this is something that we, we need is to find our own way to connect our members more and engage uh, more, um, you know, with our, with our uh, own, you know, personal development and mentoring of, of new developers. Um, we do have a, a training program um, that we've been, um, had for about eight years or so and uh, bringing new, new members in, new developers in. Um, but I, I personally would be, would love to continue the conversation and see, yeah, what might be possible. Um, and I can make those connections. Um, so thank you for the question, the invite. Awesome. Thank you, Joy. Are there any more questions? Or, or bits of information that, that anyone else wanted to share to, with the group as well? You know, I realize now that I'm I'm a terrible plugger for things I should be plugging for CW. So I mentioned our art and science of cooperative development training. Um, and I, I know Robbie had actually just mentioned in her check-in uh, that we started our virtual portion of it yesterday. Um, so that has just started. Uh, I will share that. Um, in September, we're bringing a portion of the training back to in-person for the first time since 2019, which is really exciting. Uh, so we have this first virtual part happening that covers some of the content, and then we'll actually be doing tours of co-ops in Oakland in September. Um, so you can also find out some more information on the website about that. Um, and that is just one of our, our three trainings that comprise the art and science of cooperative development. Um, so we also have toolkit implementation, uh, which will likely be offered virtually this year. Um, probably around November has been the trend. And uh, then we have finance fundamentals, which is uh, an intensive course to understand um, feasibility, uh, loan readiness. Uh, it's a really great in-depth course. And that's also virtual and usually offered around March of the year. So if any of those interest you, um, definitely check out our website. Um, Deb had mentioned all the ways to get in contact with cooperative developers. If you know you want to get in contact with someone and you can't actually find any of their information or you just don't know where to start, there's also a link on the CW webpage where if you um, send an email, get in contact, that'll come directly to me. Um, so I can try to connect you with uh, that the person I think might be best suited to help you out or at least point you to the, the best person to help you out. Um, yeah. Perfect. Awesome. Deb, was there anything else that you wanted to add? I see you unmuted yourself too. <laughs> oh, no, sorry. I just had not remuted myself. <laughs> no problem, no problem. Um, I don't know if anyone ha else has a, a moment to ask a question, um, but if there are, uh, just to highlight uh, one quick thing, if there are any other events or resources that others have found that have been helpful that they want to share, we encourage you to post those in the chat as well. Diane, I see your hand raised, so I'll, I'll call on you next and then throw a question in there if, if we don't have anyone else who asked one just yet, but Diane, the floor is yours. But you're still on mute, just so you know. Okay. It's been meeting. Uh, thank you. And um, so th th this is more, not necessarily a question, but well, it's a question too the topic for discussion. Um, I have a couple of people um, that I um, that have an interest in becoming cooperative developers here in the Northwest and um, uh, not necessarily under the NWCDC umbrella, but definitely part of, um, you know, they would be part of our network. And uh, they've asked me to put together a budget for doing a mentoring program. 
um, and I just had this conversation yesterday, um, and as part of my initial thinking, I'm like, well, they need to be members of CW, we need to get them engaged with NCBA, we, uh, and the, uh, they're interested in worker co-ops, so the U.S. Federation of Worker Co-ops and all of their iterations, and, um, and I just wonder if anybody else has um, thought about this, and, um, and so while all of the programs that are available are incredibly important, and, uh, you know, a big shout out to CW for, um, if, just personally, they, um, from day one, they expanded my capacity um, to provide services, not just in doing joint projects, but um, and having additional expertise always available at your fingertips um, through their membership. But um, but also, so connecting people with the programs that are available, but also, you know, what does that one-on-one -on -one mem uh, mentoring look like if you've thought about that or done it? Are you asking if CW has done the one-on-one -on -one mentoring? Of CW or any of the folks that are part of this um, circle? Or any thoughts, and whether you've done it or not? <laughs> um, yeah. It's all, you know, more heads are better than one. I would love to hear from other folks. I don't think that we have done any of the one-on-one -on -one mentoring in any um, formal capacity. Uh, I do think as we were looking at sort of expanding the art and science of cooperative development a couple of years back that that was a, something that came up um, offering some kind of shadow or um, deeper connection post training with that development center and yeah I would love to hear from other folks about what would be useful or their experiences with that thanks for asking that Diane um, going here I I could um, to that um, I have done some mentoring myself here in Canada um, you know, through the training program, uh, which generally had about 10, 12 participants going through different modules, each person was assigned a mentor. And we would just meet once a month uh, for an hour or so with them, um, kind of fielding their questions, sharing some um, examples of project work we were doing. Um, yeah, just trying to support them and I've also had people shadow my work. Um, just generally, I start with, I, I like, you know, just get to know them, uh, that they just sit in on a Zoom call or a meeting. And, uh, and then I'll meet separately with them and go back over some of the things that happened in the meeting with the group. And um, again, see what kind of questions they have and um, give them some heads up on why I said this or why I said that and so on. Um, so. Um, yeah, just just sort of, yeah, starting down that path with a bit of that kind of mentoring. Thanks, Troy. That's kind of been a, a bit of my thinking too, is that although rather than um, once a month, I was thinking of once a week and um, and that I, I you know, I, I believe that um, we learn best by doing and, um, and so uh, coaching them through the development of a particular project too. Awesome. And Ellie, I see your hand is raised. Um, yeah, um, we've definitely done some of that. I think um, just be either prior to the academies or coming out of the academies, it just seemed like it was so necessary um, because people would be getting bits and pieces of information, but not really having the full path. And so, um, a lot of it was around co-op readiness. So before the academy, just sort of getting your head around what does it really mean to be a part of a cooperative? How do these principles and values live? What do they really look like? Sort of basic stuff, accountability, um, consensus, decision-making, collective work, those kinds of things. Um, just sort of really doing one-on-one -on -one with that. And then post the academy, um, there was more work just in just in general, one on one with folks that just needed just needed more attention. Um, one of our technical assistance providers was actually working every week. Once a week, they would meet with the group. And this was a fishery co-op starting in uh, Augusta, I think. And um, and they just needed more. So they would go over some of the business planning prep, um, some of the even uh, relational 
relational work. Might, there might have been some old trauma, some wounds that may have affected conversations or decision making. So we kind of got deep with it. Um, she happened to have a psychology background, so it worked. But um, we just found that there were these other pieces definitely needed. So, so we definitely have played with it informally and are looking to make it more official. Well, thank you all for sharing. Anything else anyone else wants to add? Okay, I know we have a, a few more minutes left. So if you have another question that's brewing, feel free to put it in the chat if you're not ready to share it out loud. Uh, but one uh, thing that I did want to ask as a, as a final wrap up or uh, final remarks from both Deb and Alex, um, if, if, if there's anything that you would like to share with those who are on the call today that you, that you wish that you knew when you were either getting started or along your journey working in, in cooperative development programs and working in the space, if there's a tidbit or a gem that you would like to share as a takeaway for the, the guests on today's call to be able to walk away with, we'd love to hear that from you. I alluded to it earlier, um, but collaboration and developing partnerships, I think is so critical to the work we do. Um, we've only got so much, so much time, so much energy to do what we want to do. And there's so much need out there. There's so much that so much more we could do if we could harness our ability to work with others and to develop those partnerships. So partnerships would be um, at the top of my list. Excellent, thank you for that, Deb. Thanks, Deb. I would definitely uh, echo that. And, and I think my advice is, uh, or yeah, what I wish I knew earlier uh, is in a similar vein is I think when you are maybe outside of the cooperative movement network sphere, um, it can feel really hard to get started and like things are not connected and you don't know where to look. But I think once you make those first few initial connections, uh, the network itself is actually pretty well connected. And even if you are connected with somebody who maybe isn't quite the right person to help you because it's a different sector or a different region, or they just offer different services, they can probably connect you with someone who'll, who can provide uh, what you're looking for. So I, I think just, taking those first steps to make connections uh, is so vital for, um, for really finding whatever it is you're looking for in, in the cooperative world. Um, and, and just knowing that there, there are some really tight, uh, strong connections here. Excellent. Well, thank you, Alex. And thank you again, Deb, both for, for sharing your gems as we come to a close for today's event. Uh, we hope that everyone who's been on the line today had a chance to hear something that is going to help what they're going to be doing moving forward with their work. Um, and we hope that you will join us again for the next conversation that we will continue to have regarding cooperative development programs and other uh, different topics that impact cooperatives. Um, and before I uh, give any additional commentary, I'm gonna pass it back over to one of our interns, Bari, to close us out. Hi everyone, I just wanted to thank you all so much for coming. I also wanted to mention that there will, there will be another happy hour in August on Fridays, 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And thank you all so much. See you next time. Thanks, Thanks. everyone. Thank you. Thanks everybody. Take care. Have a great weekend. Thank you everyone, blessings. Thanks, good to see all your faces, bye. Do you need us to stay on at all or can we just hop off? Yeah, you can hop right on off. Hope you guys right. have a great weekend. Thank you Thanks. again. You too. Bye-bye.